I've been very, very excited to do this um, next video on how to trade crypto. And um, so the first two videos are making sure that we have the correct coin, that we're trading the right coin. And then the second one is position size. Uh, the best, most accurate strategy can absolutely blow up if you have the wrong coin or if you're uh, leveraged or using the wrong position size. But with those two down as a foundation, it's finally time to start talking about trading and how to trade. So what we're going to be talking about is how to read a chart. This is really going to make a difference in your trading. <clears throat> so what trading comes down to, um, trading every chart has its ups and downs. Right now we're looking at Ethereum on the monthly chart. So this represents five years worth of trading history. And you could, you'll could you notice right away, just looking at this chart, there's, there's no indicators, there's no lines, uh, there's nothing um, you know, messing, messing up with this, with this chart. It's just very clean, but you'll notice that there are ups and downs. You'll notice that there are periods where we go down. There are periods when we go up, down, up. The cyclical behavior of charts matches the cyclical behavior of human beings. Uh, charts behave in a fairly uh, predictable manner based on uh, human emotion. And human emotion is remarkably predictable, um, and and so there is, you know, when people get excited, uh, people behave a certain way. When people are scared, they behave a certain way. And when when we have these points of cycles where there are these lows and these highs, uh, you would think that it's really easy to know that you're at a high or know that you're at a low and that you can just easily buy when it's low and easily sell when it's high. <laughs> the new traders think that it's just the easiest thing on earth. Like why on earth wouldn't you sell here and why on earth wouldn't you buy here? Well, um, because the emotions that are involved um, are very, very complex and markets are made to trick you into selling at the wrong time and buy at the wrong, the wrong time. So today we're talking about support and resistance. So I'm going to define what a support is. <clears throat> support is where a price is dropping, 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 and it can't drop any further. So at this point we find support because um, all the people selling are all run out of money. All the people that are scared and ready to sell and think it's going down, that side of the, the mentality has completely exhausted their resources. And, and then we have people that um, are willing to, to buy, and now there's a shift. There are people that are more willing uh, to buy than there, than there are to sell, and momentum changes direction, and we head up uh, on a swing. So at this point where the market uh, changes from bearish to bullish, we create these natural bottoms. And this is what I call a support because there is a price level right here that supported uh, the price from falling further. And then as we go up, we see the exact opposite. We, we climb, 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 and all the people that are so excited and buying and buying and buying and buying, everyone who wants to buy has bought, and they've exhausted this side of this particular run. So people have bought it all the way up to this point, and nobody's willing to spend more than this. And all the people that are selling um, are trying to sell it for as much as they possibly can, and they can't get any more than this amount out. And so the price turns direction. And as the prices fall back down, this point at the top is called resistance because the price met with an invisible line of resistance where the, the price resisted going up any further. So it resisted here, 
and now we fall back down. Well, these points uh, generally create patterns and people watch these, uh, a lot of investors watch these for cues on how to trade next. So at the top, we have resistance. Here we have one uh, falling down to uh, support because here's another place where no one was willing to sell it for less than this and, and people were now more willing to buy than they were to sell and we have a support here. And then we travel on up, we hit resistance, we find support, we hit resistance, and then we're falling, 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 falling until we find support again. So all these points of support and resistance uh, can be traded. You don't know if it's support or resistance though until uh, a, way, a, a little while longer. <clears throat> so this is how it gets a little tricky. So for example, where um, we've had a support and then a higher support and then an even higher support, most people think, oh, we are trending upwards because our supports are increasing. And so as, as this support finds uh, confirmation during this candle right here, if people buy here, uh, they were incorrect. And this is just a natural part of trading. And then we, we fall down, and then we, we come back up, and, and we've broken this support. So when we, when we travel across a prior support or resistance, we call this breaking support or breaking resistance. And what happens is where this support was uh, created here, uh, we traded for quite a few months above that level. We never broke our our prior resistance though. So we were, uh, this little candle here, this little line up here, if we wick through, uh, that, then that is, that's just fine, but it doesn't matter until the candle actually closes. So this is a rejection. We were rejected right here, this little wick. It attempted to break through this support level, or this resistance level, and it couldn't find legs. We never closed above it. So this was a rejection, and now we're heading back down. And when we finally get down to a, a major support, when this breaks, usually uh, there's, a, there's momentum that, that builds, and we, have, we struggle to uh, hold up that momentum. So these are turning points, but what, what really, there are a couple of things to know about this. Uh, the supports and resistance are much, much, much more powerful on larger time frames. A monthly support or resistance is going to trump a weekly support or resistance. A weekly support or resistance, so see how these we had, it, it actually, uh, we hit this bottom point twice on the weekly, where on the monthly you couldn't see this. but. This weekly is going to be um, also, it'll, it'll create its own support and resistance, but it won't be as powerful as monthly. And then if you go down to daily, uh, daily is even less. These supports and resistance are even thinner and, and less important. When you get down into four hour, one hour, 15 minute, five minute, um, there are these, these supports and resistance, even though they show up, they're very, very thin. They break very easily. They don't, they don't hold up a lot of strength or support. Um, so for example, see this, this resistance here and this support here. We immediately broke resistance, created a, a new resistance. We came back down and we sliced back through this resistance. <clears throat> so the next thing to learn about support and resistance is that usually when support, when, when we have a resistance or support line and it gets broken, most often it becomes support on the other side. So normally when people are scared because we've broken through a certain level, if they were just patient enough, we usually revisit these levels. So I'm going to go back out to the monthly just so that we can kind of see 
and and check a couple of examples. So where we've um, so we started off our candle uh, right here about 0 0.007 something like that, and then we fell, created support, and then we broke through this um, level. So where this would would have been resistance before, it now should flip to support. So when people miss the trade and it goes all the way up and they, they miss their chance, most often we will come back down and we will touch on, on we, we will do a, a handoff between support and resistance. So we found support here on a place where we prior that before we had resistance. And then we've changed directions. And now we are here butting up against this where we had resistance, um, most often we will find resistance again unless we break it. And when we break these points, uh, it usually takes a lot of strength to get through and change the, the, the direction of this. So as this resistance breaks on this candle, it should normally flip to support. So we found a new resistance level up here and now we're dropping back and we found the exact same level here and this line represents the price dropping down reaching that support and then we pulled back up and ended up closing the candle up here but the body of the candle ended up way higher than this support but or, but this resistance but we did uh, go down, test it, and found it as support. This is bullish. So we found support off of this and we made this perfect handoff. Now that we came back up, we found this top as resistance. Because we didn't break this, it remains resistance until it's broken. So right here we found resistance and now we started heading back down. So our last level of support was here and uh, we we made these kind of moves, but these sideways moves don't make a lot of um, difference. It, it really matters when we get to these major points. So we we found our our support here, and it broke. So when this breaks, this now flips to resistance. And how did that happen? We dropped back. We pulled up a little bit, and look at this. This wick intersects with this wick and this wick. So these wicks changed hands, they both touched that resistance point and retreated. So we came back up, we found this prior support to be resistance, and now we, we fall back down. Now we, here we've created a new line. So this here is now our new support. And as we go back up and come back down, it remains support because we did not close below these candles and so it remains support until it's broken well now now we've had a, a move upward and where did we get rejected we got rejected right here this is where our new our new uh, support happened so we got rejected but then because we didn't lose our prior support, we were able to test it again. And this time, this candle breaks the support. So you can see how every move is telling a story. Every, every swing up and down is interacting with some other piece of history. So where this was support here, um, this, is, this gets a little bit more technical because this was resistance flipped to support here, but because the bodies have moved up, our new support level is here, not necessarily here, although this, this level is still on the table. And this level came back into play later on when we retested, but right here, we broke through and lost the support that was here, which allowed us to fall back to this level again. So it's interesting. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to uh, learn about how this works. So the takeaways are um, 
the levels of support and resistance are greater and more more weighty on larger times time frames and on smaller time frames they are less weighty so if we find a monthly or a weekly support or resistance uh, and there's a daily support and resistance that's that's playing nearby it will be it'll be the weekly and monthly that take precedence because they are stronger um, pivot points now the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to jump down into the daily so that we can get a little bit more action and we can look at some examples I'm just gonna pull us back into just a random time frame just so we can say okay um, what can we learn from these points of support and resistance and is there something else that we can can kind of learn from this so um, let's just go let's go with a nice run up so I'm gonna pull us back to the beginning and we can kind of look and and see if we can use some of this knowledge on the daily to learn something new and there's one other piece of information I want to give you guys so when we first of all started trading we started trading in this range and we've established sort of our first resistance our first support and as we trade within that range um, in this case we got tighter and a tightening creates a triangle and this is still support and resistance it's just that our our resist our resistance is getting shorter our support is getting higher and there's an indecision that's happening when one side or the other breaks out usually that's the direction of the new trend so we trended back down we had a slight pull up which met our lower lines of resistant of support down here so this flips to resistance and then we continue down and um, these smaller moves it's a little questionable how how important they become but uh, no question about this point being pretty important so this is a is a pivot move for sure and now we've moved up and we're finding this this old range that we originally had a lot of interaction with it was resistance before it became resistance again that's fine so we came back down we tested this support and found it as support <clears throat> so we didn't break it even though the tail goes down below it matters where it closes <clears throat> so this is a new level of support so we've we've uh, reinforced our support we have not found a new high though so we are continuing to trade um, this is a level where our our um, support uh, moved up from here to here and when we tested it it fell and we broke through and then what happened it flipped to resistance so this point now became resistance so we do have support here but we have resistance here and we also have resistance here so we've got all these different points just showing up it's just natural moves but it's just that the most recent trading activity has established these points as uh, as, as important pivot points so we came back up and we were rejected off of this we came back and tested again once we start testing a line many times in a row it weakens it especially if you have um, support that is gaining momentum so here we have two solid established points of support and we have a higher support right here and all of this combined tested this level enough and weakened it to the point where investors were convinced that it's time to go and in this case we we went up we had a long candle that broke through this level here so this did not remain resistance this should flip to support and then we came back up and we struggled for a few days on this level this was our oldest level and what happened when we finally break out it breaks out with a large candle and then we came up and pulled back and we're messing around with this range so there are some old things once we get into this area there's no information here but there is one thing that we can take as a piece of information what happens is there is usually a, a, 
the distance between our most recent support and our most recent resistance when we get into um, these really, really high moves. So this was a 232% gain. If we take it from the most recent resistance, and we go up 237, 230, whatever, this gives us this gives us a pattern. So what we would expect is that if we we move up without without a break, without falling back and finding support or resistance, what will happen is is um, the the chart will naturally find a pattern to follow and it's usually the distance that we have uh, gained here it will usually be around that same thing because if it's higher uh, usually charts get get really choppy and then they'll fall back if it's lower um, then uh, I mean that's just a natural natural you know I mean people can people can sell and, and make these points wherever but the maximum is usually the take profit is where that pattern happens and the patterns are, are more um, predictable so these traders are like you know I we we've created this pattern but we're gonna take profits early because we don't want to miss the ability to exit so this is just a smart move this is a this is kind of a whale m move but anyway by establishing this resistance um, we c we fell back and found an unsupported bottom so so there are different types of handoffs between the points of, of resistance and support what happens is if we have a a resistance that should flip to support but it never makes it it makes this a shaky a shaky move uh, the perfect move is when you have these types of things where where you've got um, where you have a support that flips to resistance but it retests it before it moves on the retest really helps with the structure it helps with the continuation it helps it helps give things direction and as an investor it gives us more clarity on which on where we are actually headed so when there's a gap here that means that there's a lot of over excitement in a market <clears throat> And this overexcitement uh, will come back and bite us because these get really shaky if there's not a good handoff. But we'll move on. Um, so we came up and we found we found this point of of um, resistance without a, a, a pullback to support. So when we when we come back up and we find a new high, naturally we should be flipping. Um, this support and when we don't we've had a miss so this this miss is a change in momentum because if you have a support or a resistance that flips to support and you continue to do resistance flip to support you have a strong structure for a continuation once we get pretty high and things start moving uh, the first thing that will happen is we find a support that does not flip to res or a resistance that does not flip to res support that happened during this this candle right here so this is our cue that we we lost our most recent point and so if we can't it, when this happens you can tell that there's a difference a change in the market so in this case we would start getting we'd start reevaluating our position size and finding exits. But um, so now we've now we're trading in a range. Well what happens what what happens when we find a new when we have a slip? So we've we've gone through and we've cut through it. Every time you cut through a, a resistance and support and you come back in, this is where I start drawing lines because this is our new we, we we have created a channel when we connect points of resistance and support these uh, create channels and we will trade within the channel until one side breaks out 
since we've lost our, our high and our bottom is fairly flat, and there's a greater than 50% chance that we drop out the bottom. But you can see how when this broke, what happened? We came back and found it as resistance. So what, was used, what used to be support has now flipped to resistance. And um, now this is a genuine downturn. When we have this flip to resistance and now we've lost our support here, this is normally uh, the beginning of a sell-off. So we would, be, uh, we would be expecting downside. Well, markets are unpredictable. They, they go up, they go down. Um, we randomly, investors, pulled our, our price back up and our level of support uh, did not fall very far. And in fact, this move here broke this here. So where we had a slip up here, where our support and resistance didn't uh, do a perfect handoff, that exact same thing happened here. So now you know that we, we are not doing this clean downward move. We, we lost this point. So because of that, we know that there's another shift in the market happening. So as we went, we found resistance on our same line. And look at this. This trend line here became support. So these channels, they just they come back into play. Um, you can see how it just naturally happened right here too. But all these supports and resistance, they, they all give us a lot of information on what to expect and where we're headed. Timing them perfectly is, is not an exact science because you'll have gaps and you'll have these slippage moments. Slipping, slipping points of resistance and support create channels. And the channels can give us more information about where future support and resistance will be. But nothing has to follow the perfect pattern. There can always be uh, big moves that push us back through. So look, we finally flipped back up through this and we created a new resistance here. What do you think this line's gonna do? This line that, that was support now became, or excuse me, which, which was support over here and then flipped to resistance three times, it now flips to support again. So now we're support on this line until we have a giant move that has enough strength to push us back through. And this move was pretty, pretty awesome. It was a pretty big move and it pushed us all the way down to this particular line and gave us a handoff with this, this line here. So you can see now we have this high and this low that have traded hands and now we've established it as support. So these lines will just pop up all over the place and it's because of that um, support and resistance. And can you play every single one of these moves and time everything perfectly? No. But when you when you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, um, you can get things. You can you can catch things on a swing, and they'll be much they'll be much easier to spot. But you can just see all the patterns just showing up. Uh, we've got we've got this this nice line that we've established as support a few times. But look at this because this support um, did not break like this did not fall apart on us. Uh, it allowed uh, us a chance to. Uh, gain some momentum and come back to the other side. So with this information, um, we're just going to blind trade just using our, our information that we have. We have a support right here. We have a resist resistance line right here. And because we've had a slip between this, this, um, this resistance, like we didn't break through and establish this as support, this creates a channel. So now, we're in a kind of a no trade zone and our, our channels just cruising along, our channels cruising along. As our, as our trades are happening, we are watching for a break on either side. Look at this. So in this case, um, okay, so we found resistance again here. And I'm just gonna put this in so we can, we can see it. But here's our channel. Okay, we just had a close below this channel. Um, horizontal levels of resistance and support are more powerful. So um, there, there can possibly be 
um, a support here. But in this case, I would expect us to be bearish. And we'll just, you know, I, I don't know what the chart looks like. So we are pulling down. Yeah, quite a bit. <clears throat> but where would we find support? We could possibly find support here. We could find support here, but this is our gap. This is where our chart was was shaky, and this this creates future fear. There's a uh, there's a no man's land right in here, and so well, let's just see how it trades. Let's zoom out. Okay, so we created support right here. There was no levels established all the way down. I mean, some of these are minor but technically this was a big one. So this became a major level of support. And where did that support come from? Right here, just like magic. So we found support. Was it enough to change the trend? No, uh, we have a pretty strong down, downturn happening. And now in this bar here, we are now retesting this support. Where our downside has been relentless, and our support is retested in a short period of time, I would expect more downturn. So who knows? Let's just see what happens next. Okay, so we did. We came down pretty hard. But then after a few days, uh, we started changing directions. So when we're down here, what are we looking for? We are looking for a change of momentum. This should be resistance, correct? This should be major resistance. I'll just put it in so that we've got it. This line here, total total resistance. We had a, a candle that closed above it. A close above this means that we found a slippage point where, where our most recent resistance and our most recent support um, are not, are not del delivering the, um, uh, the resistance and support that we once thought was there. So we have our, we do have a support here, but we know that this is no longer a valid uh, point, at least for the time being. So as we go, we, we start messing with this area and I would expect a retest of this level to see if we have support, which we did. And this line is still in play, but we've also established a new, a new, um, momentum change. So now we've got our eyes on this point here. And when we get a strong bar that breaks this resistance, now the odds are greater than 50% that we're on an upswing. Because what we have is we have, we have a new level of support. We have a higher support. We have a, a, a high, and then we have a higher high. So we are now officially in a, um, this is, this is a change of momentum. So now we're expecting to head back up. And holy cow. <laughs> so, in other words, so anyway, you, you can get the idea. Um, each of these support and resistance levels, they all, um, they all come into play. And they, as long as you're patient and you're careful and you make these um, decisions based on this, it helps you plan for the future. You can kind of see uh, where things are going a little bit in advance. Um, but what we're, you know, to really recap, we are looking for uh, supports that flip to resistance and resistance that flip to support. And uh, we're looking for uh, places where supports and resistance are broken. But we just need to remember that not every one of these trades is guaranteed that the odds of these things happening are greater than 50 per, 51 percent but um, as long as we have a good position size and we are trading a coin that is uh, going to to swing sway you know inflation wise towards the base currency that we are trading um, we will most likely have more base, base currency we just need to watch these points of, of support and resistance and make smart decisions as we trade. Keeping our trade size at 1% and being patient over time, we can make money trading. And this should help you a lot moving into the future.